guys, and welcome back to another episode of Lost Bits, right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where we take a look at the scrapped, unused, and unseen content in video games. Cuphead is a side-scrolling, run-and-gun game in the style of a 1930s cartoon, and it was for sure one of my favorite games of 2017. Thankfully, the game is host to a plethora of unused content, and honestly, it's some of the most bizarre leftover stuff that I've ever seen. I was going to wait a bit before making this video, but a ton of you guys have been asking me to make it, including Kevin from SMG4 and the Hobo Bros, so here we are. Anyways, without further delay, go grab a cup or a mug, this match is about to get red hot, it's time to find some lost bits. Alright, so what do you say we kick off this video with some unused weapons and charms? There are a total of 5 weapons and 2 charms that ultimately go unused in the final release of the game. First is Arc. As the name implies, a projectile is fired in an arc and will then stick to the ground. Soon after hitting the ground, the projectile will grow and will then explode if an enemy touches it. The weapon also has 3 distinct damage values depending on when it hits the enemy. The lowest damage would come just after the projectile hitting the ground, the medium value after it has grown on the ground, and the highest damage would actually occur if the projectile explodes mid-air. When using the EX attack, the weapon would fire out a shot in a downward arc which would again stick to any surface and explode after a while. Next up is Ranger or Exploder, as it is sometimes referred to in the files. Both names explain half of how this weapon works, as the attack explodes and it does more damage the further the range is. So really, I think it would have made more sense to call it the Ranged Exploder or something. Right away, you can probably tell that this weapon wasn't finished to be used in the final game, as it only uses red circles as placeholders, which grow and then awkwardly explode upon contact. But oddly enough, in the original Cuphead teaser trailer released by the developers, we can see that the projectiles for Exploder, even back then, were already stylized. So it's pretty weird why only the placeholder circles are left over unused in the final release. The EX Exploder attack simply just fires out a fast moving projectile which after hitting something, will shoot another projectile back at the player, and oddly enough it will do damage if it happens to hit you. Kind of a dumb attack if you ask me. Next is Triple Laser, which is exactly what it sounds like. Although it is one of the weakest weapons compared to all the rest, it is the only weapon that can pass through objects and still damage enemies. Now whether this is intended or just simply the result of the coding not being complete is still unknown. The triple shot also doesn't have a special EX shot and Cuphead will just shoot nothing. This suggests that it was scrapped from the game before the EX shot was even programmed at all. There's also a scrapped weapon that would have been used in an airplane level simply called Laser. For some reason this is the only weapon that I couldn't get to work, but it would basically look just like the starting weapon but shot from the plane. Its EX special would shoot out several shots in a circle. I'm fairly certain this was just an early version of the normal plane weapon we got to see in the final game, before it was properly stylized. The last unused weapon is known as Arcade P-Shot, and it was planned for the also scrapped level called Coin Op Bop, which we will come back to later. When trying to load this weapon in the game, it just straight up didn't work, and after dying, the game actually softlocked. So it looks like the coin op bop level was scrapped before this weapon was even fully finished. And next up we have some unused charms. The first of these was referred to as turret, and aside from some brief mentions in the game's code, not much is really known about this charm. However, based on its name alone, it's safe to assume that it would probably spawn some independent object that would assist the player in shooting other enemies. The other unused charm was known as shield. The shield charm would simply grant the player invincibility from falling into pits, and would also extend the length of the invincibility frames after recovery. Strangely enough, even though this charm is unused, the developers actually nerfed it in one of the game's patches. Now let's move along to the game's unused music and sounds. There are a lot of sound files left over in the game from the 2015 demo of Cuphead, which go unused, but they're mostly like half a second long, so I'll just quickly play through all of them. <laughs> Similarly, there are also a bunch of unused sounds that sound like they were meant for some of the game's weapons. I'll quickly just run through them all as well. Now 
Next are two creepy sounding laughs. They are believed to have been intended for the bomb special attack used in the game's airplane sections. <laughs> the game also contains sounds for Cuphead and Mugman's intro animations. In the final release, these go unused and the intro animations are silent. The game also has unused death sounds for Cagney Carnation, or as I like to call him, Boy. The first of these is a death sound that would have played for Cagney being defeated in his second phase. <coughs> this sound was used when defeating Cagney in early demos of the game, but in the final release, Cagney is silent between his second and third phase. The other unused Cagney sound is believed to be a death sound if defeated in the game's simple mode. As much as I love Cuphead's title theme, in the game's files there is another awesome unused title theme referred to as BGM Title Screen. This title theme is completely different than the final one used and it has different words and it is much more upbeat. Let's have a listen. really like it. You might have also heard towards the end of the track that the Cuphead lyric sounds basically identical to the sound played in the overworld after completing a level. So I guess at least some part of the unused title theme made its way into the final release. Okay, time to get into some weird stuff. There is an unused sound file referred to as MUS Intro Don't Deal With The Devil Vocal 666, with the 666 obviously referring to the number of the beast from the Book of Revelation. Anyways, this track is the opening theme played in reverse and in a lower pitch. And if that wasn't creepy sounding enough, towards the end of the track you can hear the menacing laughter of King Dice faintly in the background. But wait, there's more! When viewing the latter part of the file as a spectrogram, which is a visual representation of the spectrum of frequencies of a sound, the first phase, transition, and second phase of the devil fight can all be made out. Enough talk, let's have a listen. And speaking of the devil fight, the game also contains some unused placeholder concept sketches of the devil. Those sure are some wiggly arms. Other unused placeholder graphics include text for the explosions in the Cagney Carnation fight. They simply say, this goes boom, and then cloudy, where the resultant smoke would appear. Next is a placeholder graphic called Soul Idol, which would have been used for an enemy that would have appeared in the fight with Mr. Chime. Next is a placeholder sketch of a nun. Now this gets even more interesting as this nun would have appeared in a normally unused branched path in the fight with Sally stage play. In normal play, after the first phase, Sally would hop in a car with her newlywed husband and drive off to the next phase at their home. Instead, with some modification, there is actually a completely unused alternate path in this fight. 
In a bad turn of events, the groom would have died from the chandelier falling on him, and instead of driving off, Sally would quickly mourn. The fight would then transition to a nunnery. Here the nuns would have thrown rulers at the player for some odd reason. But as you can see, not only are the nuns not programmed in yet, but the rulers default to an also unused image of Jared Moldenhauer, who was the lead game designer for Cuphead. This picture is known as Jerry. Jared is actually the default for projectile if the intended art is removed. The game actually has several instances of the Jared head, such as the realistic version, it crossed out, an Illuminati version, one where it explodes, and then there's Jared head, uh, Cuphead's long lost cousin? Anyways, back at the nunnery, we can also see some unused animations for the priest in the background. The third phase would also be different as the husband would return, but in an also unused deity form. His attack is simply just holding up some grapes and shooting out a removed projectile in a straight path, which again defaults to Jared. Surprisingly, this unused husband deity form is still loaded in the final game and can be seen just off the screen. He can even be defeated off screen, however it doesn't really have any effect. There is another unused attack that can't even be loaded called Shuriken Bomb that must have been scrapped even earlier in development. It would have just been some curved blades attached to a bomb hanging on a rope. And next up are several levels that were scrapped from the final build. First, there are four unused levels that appeared in the 2016 demo of the game. These run and gun stages were known as Woodland Walk, Tricky Thicket, Forest Frolic, and Backwoods Crusade. They all followed a sort of forest theme and they all used the same enemies seen in the Forest Follies level from the final release. I briefly mentioned it earlier, but there is another scrapped level called Coin Op Bop. As the name and parts of the code suggest, this level would have been based in a sort of arcade. The code also suggests that there would have been different phases in the level with references to classic video games such as Frogger, Space Invaders, and Asteroids. There is also reference to Big Cuphead and Big Mugman. Some fans have speculated that this would have meant that Cuphead and Mugman would sit in front of an arcade cabinet playing the level. A fan had even made a mock-up to show what the level might have been. I honestly think this would have been such an awesome level design. A few unused graphics for this level also exist, such as the tent which would have been seen in the overworld, as well as an unused peanut character that would talk about the arcade. The arcade tent looks very similar to a tent seen in Equal Isle 2 in the final release that has the words under construction on it. There is also a track titled Coin Op Bop that made its way onto the game's official soundtrack release. Both this and the tents make me think that maybe Coin Op Bop will make a return to the game in the future as DLC. Fingers crossed. So I already mentioned the unused branching path in the Sally stage play fight, but this game also has a number of other boss fights that were removed, some of which can still be accessed in the game's files. First up, as briefly shown in some early beta footage, it appears like Goopy Legrand would duplicate himself and the player would have to go up against two of them at the same time. Here we can also see an early design for the health bar, EX meter, a display that shows your weapons, and also a boss timer that goes completely unused. Next up is Toast, who was only seen in very early development, and as you can see, he never really made it past the crude sketches stage. As expected, the fight would involve bread and a toaster. Go figure. Next are two scrapped vegetable bosses, both of which are believed to have been intended to be part of the Root Pack boss fight. First is Radish, who has fully made animations and has a complete sprite sheet. With some modifications, some fans have found ways to even load him into the game. This suggests that Radish might have been scrapped much closer to the game's release. The other unused boss vegetable is known as Betty Beat. A number of early sketches for her exist showing how she would enter the boss fight as well as her attacks. It seems that she would reluctantly throw what seems to be her own offspring at the player and she would cry while doing so. This is pretty morbid, so it makes sense why it was removed. Jelly the Octopus is another unused boss, but he was actually playable at E3 in 2015. He would simply move back and forth and could only be damaged if the player was to parry the pink antenna on his head. The stage for the boss fight was also completely removed, and although its name can still be seen in the files, trying to load it will just softlock the game. Similarly, another boss that appeared in an earlier 2014 trailer, Demon the Bat, was also scrapped. 
he would have two phases that are known. One flying around, and one in which he would open up a coffin and release some smaller bats. Both Demon the Bat and his fight area are similar to that of the Devil in the final game. As such, some fans believe that this was the original Final Devil fight, and since the trailer in which it was shown, it was just reworked into the one we got to see in the final release. Next is probably the most well-known unused boss, simply named the Giant Spider, or the Flying Gentleman. Not much is really known about this boss's attacks or phases, and the only thing that is known is that he would have been another flying level boss. Oddly enough, this spider only appears to have 6 legs instead of 8, so maybe the other two might have been used in some other aspect in the fight. Next are some of the unused bosses that we can still access in the files. First up is Patchy Patchy, or as I like to call him, Robo Squidward. He is a scrapped boss based on a pachinko machine that would have appeared on one of the spaces during the start of the King Dice battle. Patchy Patchy moves around and shoots an unfinished fire beam out of the top of his head. During the fight, balls also drop and start to tilt the platforms which still have the word placeholder slapped right on them. This is by far the most complete boss fight left over in the game as the fight is fully coded and Patchy Patchy even has a death animation. Just like many other things, this suggests that he was removed very late in the game's development. When losing the fight, we can also see an unused death quote saying, Cling cling clang clang, your bell has rang. However, the profile picture is still missing. I'm hoping just like Coinop Bop, we will see Patchy Patchy brought back in the future. Now is where things start getting weird. Next up is a scrapped boss area known as Dice Palace Test. Now although this area lacks an actual boss, we can see some unused pixel platforms and again some moving heads of Jerry. There is also an invisible platform on the bottom that you can still walk on. When dying in this level to the Jareeds, we can see an unused death quote saying, You are not a warrior, you're a beginner. Fans of Street Fighter will notice that this is a direct reference to Sagat's victory quote from Street Fighter 2. Next up is... Card. An angry king playing card boss that was also intended to be one of the mini bosses in the King Dice fight. Judging by all of these crudely drawn placeholder graphics, it again seems like this boss was scrapped very early on. Card also has no hitbox, so to my knowledge, there is no real way to defeat him. As you can see, the different card tiles would fall onto the platform depending on where the player is standing, and then the blocks would disappear if lines are made, kind of like Tetris. The more blocks the platform accumulates, the more it will gradually fall and eventually crush the player. I find it amazing yet strange that we can still find a way to play this stage. And last, but certainly not least, is the absolute weirdest scrap boss fight left over in the game, simply known as The Light. This fight consists of a crudely drawn green lad in the middle, with some more Jareed head projectiles and some solid colored lines. This honestly looks like the kind of game that someone would make in their first introductory programming class. The rotating blue lines will change to yellow and then to red. However, they will only damage the player when they do turn red. It is possible to defeat this boss, however he has no included death animation. The fact that this exists and is still playable is absolutely bizarre. Big shoutouts to the developers at MDHR for leaving this fight in the game. And for the last stop in this video, I was able to access the game's debugging feature and similarly to games like Sonic Mania, as kind of teased throughout this video, I was able to zoom out the camera and have a look at some of the game's normally unseen content. Now this was really interesting as it revealed many things that the developers had hiding off screen from our view. For example, most boss fights would have all of the currently unused phases loaded just off screen, waiting to be called. For instance, during the fight with Grim Matchstick the Dragon, his alternate appearance behind the player can be seen hiding just off screen on the left. Good thing that we didn't have to fight both of them at the same time. Other good examples include the fights with Rumor Honeybottoms, Beppy the Clown, and Jimmy the Great. Some other bosses, namely the ones leading up to the King Dice fight, unfortunately didn't have all too much to see. The run and gun levels, however, were also really cool to zoom out in. We can see that many enemies are called way before appearing on screen, as well as the various visual tricks the developers used in the back and foreground. Once in a while, there would also be an enemy or background object that was just left over off screen by the developers as well, never to be used again. 
Probably the coolest thing, however, was during the elevator section in the Rugged Ridge level in Inkwell Isle 3. We can see that many objects remain in the same level as the elevator, and they are just brought down with the player to the next segment. It was also really nice to just zoom out of some of the run and gun levels and just have a nice look at the levels in their entirety. And with that concludes this Lost Bits video on Cuphead, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. This game has a ton of stuff that goes unused, so I'm sure there was probably a lot of stuff that I have missed. For more information about the game's unused content and stuff that I didn't cover in this video, be sure to check out the sources which will be linked in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out more of my Lost Bits by clicking on the card right here. If you want to stay even more up to date, be sure to subscribe and check out my other social media pages which will all be linked in the description below. But as always guys, thank you all so much for watching today and for all of your amazing support, and I will see you in a bit!